Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. Today I'd like to follow up on the video that I did yesterday on Tesla with full self-driving, where I was talking about an employee that was fired as a result of posting a video to YouTube demonstrating how full self-driving was working. He was showing both the good things, where it didn't run over a pedestrian and stop for them, which is pretty cool, and he also demonstrated the bad. It was an honest video with a camera in the car demonstrating both the good and the bad of this feature as it will most likely work when you use it as a customer. It was one of many different videos on YouTube demonstrating the feature. He was fired for posting this stuff to YouTube and I did a video describing why I think this was a lame thing to do. Now there's somebody else who works in this industry who also has a repair shop and he had some criticism of what I said in my video. So I thought that we'd watch it together and go over it. Maybe he has some points that I missed and maybe it would be worthwhile to respond to those points. So the, I will leave a link down below to both my original video, the article it was based on, and also the criticism that I received earlier today. So let's go over it. This could be some fun. Let me get my headphones on here and uh, get started. What would you do if you have a company? You have a person working for you. You pay that person a lot of money. You trust that person, but you later find out that person is going behind your back and he's talking bad about your company. He's talking bad about the products that your company sell and he's destroying the overall image of your company. Would you congratulate that person, tap him on the back, salute him, give him a raise, or would you fire that person? It does not take two to think about this. You would fire that person. The reason I'm talking about this is because today I came across Lewis Rossman's video talking about Tesla fires employee for uploading video of full self-driving fail on a beta software, even if it's not a beta software. That person works for Tesla and he has no right to disturb the image of the company that he is working for. If it was anybody from the public who does not work for Tesla that uploaded that video, I have no issues because the public have the right to know. But that person works for the company and he's wondering or shaming the company for firing that person. What are you thinking? If that person who works for the company, he notices a fail in autopiloting, he can go to the person in charge at Tesla and he can tell them about what he found out. I was driving on that road and that vehicle misbehaved. I'm sure Tesla would fix it. They would release a software update. They would improve the system. There's no system out there that's perfect. It's always a work in progress. But no, rather the person uploads a video to show how autopiloting is failing on a Tesla. And by the way, I'm not affiliated with Tesla. I could care less if it's a Tesla or Ford or Chevy or whatever the case may be. What would Lewis have done if he has an employee that told customers Lewis is a great guy. Lewis knows how to fix MacBooks, but one tiny problem. He tends to drop laptops and he tends to scratch the living crap out of the surface of the MacBook. But he's a good guy. He's the boss. We cannot do anything about it. What would you think Lewis would have done? Great job, son. I really appreciate your honesty and we need more employees like you, right? No, Lewis would have fired that person like yesterday, not today. I mean, I just feel like I want to hit myself with something. Can somebody get me a hammer? The big one. Okay, so I think that there were some interesting points made there. The idea that if you are trashing a company that you work for and they are paying you, that you should have the ability to fire that employee is something I think you should be allowed to do. I think you should be allowed to fire somebody for virtually any reason that you want, as long as it's not because they're queer or because of their religion or any of that type of protected status type of stuff. Now, he's saying that if, if a company is being trashed by an employee, that you probably would not keep that employee. And that is a completely reasonable take to have. You don't want your employees to be trashing your company. That's completely understandable. And I think that the disconnect here may be I, maybe it's because I'm, I, I grew up in New York City. I viewed the, that video several times, and it's really difficult for me to come away from that video with the idea that he was trashing the full self-driving. What he did is he put a camera in his car, and he demonstrated it, and he had lots of good things to say about it. He said, oh, look, it did a good job over here. Oh, look, it didn't hit this person. It actually stopped for them. That's pretty nice. Oh, look, it didn't know what to do here and then hit something. It's really difficult for me to watch his original video and take that as trashing the company. And I was very surprised in my own YouTube comments how many people in particular said that this individual was trashing the company when in reality he was just showing how this particular product worked. Further, he was showing how that product worked in his own car that he paid his own money for. So in some way he is both an employee of the company but also a customer of the company that has some ability or right to say something about it. The next was, if there is a problem with a piece of software or hardware that your company has, you should rise it up the chain and be able to say something about it so that they may fix it. Now, when we're talking about something like full self-driving, 
This is not something where I imagine, you, again, you're just editing a piece of code so that you no longer get a segmentation fault when you're opening a piece of C++ software. This is something that's really, really difficult to make those types of fixes on. And again, you have everybody from Congress to the NHTSA to everybody, all these different alphabet soup agencies that have had criticism for this particular feature as well as other functionality of autopilot for several years now, and pretty much nothing has happened. So the idea that one individual employee would be able to just tap a boss on the shoulder and say, hey, by the way, this happened and have something radically change, I think, you know, again, making that point back in 2014 to 2017 might have worked, but in 2022, it's obvious that that's not the way that you're going to get any real change done. And again, I don't believe he was trashing Tesla in that video. Perhaps again, it's because I'm from New York City and I see how people talk here, but that's just, it didn't come across to me as, as trashing at all. And I was very surprised to see the number of people that are saying he's trashing them, he's ragging on the company, this, that, and the other. Watch the video. I mean, it just doesn't come off that way to me at all. It comes off as a basic, humble, and honest review. I have heard my own employees say worse things about products in store.rossfordgroup.com that we use here every day than, uh, than what I saw in that video. The next up is when he said that Lewis would fire somebody if he did this. I know that he would. Lewis would fire somebody if he walked up to a if somebody walked up to a customer and said Lewis drops computers all the time. I would fire somebody if they did that because I don't drop or dent computers. We specifically built the shelf that we had because it is a non-scrape surface. It's really difficult to scrape things when each machine has its own shelf. But I would do want to give a relevant example here that because a lot of this channel, I think from the very beginning has really just been me demonstrating an alternate method of running a business. And I do fundamentally believe that the way that we do business here at Rossman Repair Group is radically different from how most other companies do business. So there was a small piece that goes into a MacBook Air that you know we, we've had our debates here on what is necessary and what is not necessary to go back into the computer. One instance is something called the JTAG connector. You've seen me remove the JTAG connector on thousands of occasions in live stream because they have no functional use to us. They often have corrosion on them and it's a point of failure for the device. So we often take them off. Now there's another piece that wasn't going back into the machine as a result of the company culture being such that, well, if a JTAG doesn't belong there, that maybe this thing doesn't either. However, this other piece really, it should have been put back in the machine. It doesn't really have a purpose, but it, uh, one of my employees made the point that the machine came in with it, it should leave with it. And I didn't address his point at the time. Then he noticed when a customer had brought something in that it was missing this particular piece. And he absolutely lost it on all of us within view of this customer. He said, you know, this, the machine comes in with it, it should leave with it. Anything less than that is stealing. We have standards here. This is not how we do work. This is not how we do business. I would not want my machine to be handled like this. This is BS. And uh, the employee that did this, his name is Paul. Paul is a United States Marine. He's in the United States Marine Corps. And uh, he has, he uses language that is considerably different than what the employee in that Tesla video used. Uh, it's more, more full metal jacket, less Silicon Valley employee, if you know what I'm saying. And this was done in front of a customer. Now, Paul is not fired. He was not written up. He did not have a pay cut. He is actually now my chief technician. He, got, he was promoted after that. The reason that this occurred is because what I value from him is that he will never let this company fall below a certain standard. He will always call me out on my shit. If I allow uh, anything at this business at all to get to a point that is considered unacceptable. He will not sit down and allow this business to offer that level of service to a customer ever. He will tell me about it. And if, he, if I don't listen, then he will be vocal about it regardless of who is around to hear it. He is a respectful human being. He is kind. He is courteous. He is obedient. He does his job very well and he is a top tier employee. But like many other employees here, he will call me and other people here out on their ship respectfully, but he will call them out on their shit if there is something that needs to be called out. And this is something that, that I have not experienced when I worked at other, in other jobs. If I you know, were, were to have an outburst like that because it was actually deserved, I would be out the door immediately. And at many companies, that is indeed the norm. And that is what we've come to expect because that is what we think is necessary. And the reason that I enjoy having that type of company culture here is because it means that the standards will always be high. The standards will not simply be high just because there's one person here, or the boss is looking or I'm here. No, I can know that if I leave for several weeks to travel to the UAE or go to Dubai or I don't know, climb up a mountain or something, or I get sick, that the standards will be as high if not higher with me gone than they are with me there. Because the people that we hire here are the type of people that will expect not only anything less of themselves, 
but of the company that they work for and their employer. And they know that their employer is a person that is more than happy to be called out on this shit, demands to be called out on this shit, and, will, and is happy anytime that we have conversations, regardless of whether they are in the view of paying customers that allow this business to maintain a high standard. When he said what he said, I did not believe this customer is now gonna leave and never come back here. I believe that this customer, quite the opposite, is thinking to himself, there's no place else I would ever go than here. They're being honest about something that was done wrong, that should have been done right, that I didn't even notice in front of me. And that customer did become a repeat customer. Unfortunate for them, they, they kept spilling shit on that, on that computer. God bless MacBooks and their completely lack of liquid resistance in their design. It was my job to keep standard at this company high. It was my job in that instance to create training procedures and protocols that allowed everybody to understand how to keep the standard high for this particular piece. And it was myself that failed in doing this job. And when I failed at doing that job, somebody else stepped in and said something about it. And that is why he still works here. That is why I value his input. That is why I respect him as an employee. And that is one of the things that I believe has allowed us to keep our ratings as high as they are over the past several years. If you take a look online and you just Google Rossman Repair Group, one of the things you'll see, whether it's on Yelp or, uh, or Google Places, like, I mean, we have some of the best reviews in the industry. I mean, it's just, and these are reviews that I believe were earned by our staff, but they were also reviews that were earned by their attitude. I know there's probably going to be some comments saying something along the lines of, well, you know, that's just because you have a large YouTube channel or something. Use archive.org. Take a look at what it looked like 10 or eight years ago, back when this channel had anywhere from zero to 50 subscribers. And you'll see, we had the same thing going on back then, and we had the same number and quality and quantity of reviews in contrast to every place else in the area back then that uh, we do now. And I'm proud of that. And part of the reason that we have that is because we've always had this type of company culture that simply does not allow this type of garbage to happen here. It cannot happen here. And if it does happen here, it will be called out and it will be called out publicly. Again, in a manner that is much, much more direct and much, much more aggressive than what was put in that Tesla video that people are claiming is destroying the reputation of the company where he's being mean and he's trashing them. Dude, if, if, if that's what they think is trashing in Silicon Valley, I'm honestly more scared to curse there than I am in the UAE. He did that in front of a customer. So what? So what? Maybe that was what was necessary in order for that change to happen. Look at Tesla. We're talking about a company that sold a car that cost $140,000. It arrived broken. And when he asked for a refund on the monthly full self-driving because they were taking forever to fix his car that arrived broken at $140,000, they said, there's no way that we can help you. There is literally no option. Watch that video. There are people that are buying cars for sixty or $70,000 that are missing USB ports. And it does come as a surprise because several of the people that have said they had this didn't realize that they were never told it was missing the USB port. They noticed it and they brought it back and they had to bring it back and wait for it to be installed. Tesla is a company that quite frankly needs a few more people like Paul working there that are willing to say these things, willing to say them loudly and willing to not care who's in the room for it. It has positively affected my business that my staff will not let me get away with anything. And I think that that has become ingrained in the company culture here to the point where nobody's trying to do stuff like this or get away with stuff like this. And honestly, I think they need some of that too. I do not have the ability to sell out even if I wanted to. I, I can't. If I ask my employees to reflow dead graphics chips, if I ask them to, oh yeah, if the board didn't only add a small amount of liquid damage, just to, don't use the ultrasonic cleaner. This way we can get through the queue faster. They wouldn't allow me. They literally would not allow me to not do things properly. They would not allow each other to not do things properly because there is that sense of collective pride. And that sense of collective pride and that sense of collective standards is kept high by the fact that there is always that threat that if something is done, if something is released, if we put a product out there into the world that is not perfect, they are allowed to talk about it to whoever they want. And that makes sure that not only does the business come off well to the customers, but that I continue to run a business that does not screw people over. And this is one of the reasons that I think we have the reviews that we do. This is one of the reasons that I believe that if you look at the Department of Consumer Affairs licensing for us, we don't have any lawsuits against us or any complaints over the past 13 years that we've been in business. And this is why I think in spite of my best efforts to run this business into the ground, 
And trust me, I've been doing a good job of that over the past 10 years. We're still here when many other repair shops have faltered or stopped growing. And we have 12 employees. Five years ago, we had maybe, what, like five? And 10 years ago, it was literally just me and one other dude. I mean, this, this place keeps growing and growing and growing. And, and part of it is because we have that type of culture. So am I saying that you should not be allowed to fire an employee because they did a video where they showcased how the product you offer has a lot of pluses and also one negative? No, by all means, fire that person if you believe that you wanna fire that person. I will support you having the right to fire them, even if I think you're a douchebag for firing them because I want that right for myself. But will I criticize you for it? 100%. And another thing, a lot of people were saying, you know, it's a beta, it's a beta, it's a beta, it's a beta, it's a beta. Funny thing. Here's, here's one of the things I love about Tesla, by the way. Check it out. So you go to the Model 3 page. I'm going to type Control F. I'm going to type in B E T A. There are zero results on this page for the word beta. Uh, this is sold to the customer for $12,000 full self driving capability. Where's the word beta? Where's the word beta? And again, like, again, it shows up when you get the EULA on the screen. I know when you opt into it, you'll actually see that in all the fine print. But when you're on the page to actually buy the car and pay the money for it, full self-driving capability. Well, th th there's no beta word there. Now, there is the issue as to whether or not he was issued a specific employee full self-driving beta that is separate than the full self-driving beta that you get when you spend $12,000 on the website. And based on the fact that this was his personal car and also the fact that this was not seemingly disclosed, I've seen a lot of YouTube comments going back and forth on it, but it's really... That's not what I would use as a source. You would have to ask him to get an idea. Honestly, at the end of the day, even if that was the addition that you're gonna be getting in two to three days, the how mild his video was, combined with the fact that you have hundreds of videos of giant full self-driving fails out there already, really kind of makes that irrelevant to me in my personal opinion. But maybe it's not to you. In conclusion, A, I don't believe he was destroying the image of the company in any way, shape, or form. B, I don't believe he was actually trying to destroy the image of the company in any way, shape, or form. C, I believe that, again, while you do have the right to fire whoever you want to fire for whatever reason, I do think it is a little bit douchey to do that for this reason. And I do believe having a company culture where people feel comfortable being able to point out flaws in products is a good thing particularly when those are the exact same products that are currently being sold to customers for $12,000, particularly when you leave the word beta out of the page. Let me know what you think. Do you agree more with Northridge Fix or do you agree more with me? If so, why? And also check out his channel. There is a link down below and he does a lot of repairs. I don't do repairs much anymore. I've done about 600 videos on this channel with board repairs, about 200 additional live streams. And uh, my hand is a little bit too fidgety for me to feel comfortable working in customer machines on a regular basis. And uh, as you who watch the channel regularly may know, I likely worked on their devices a little bit longer than I should have so that I could still keep making videos. But I would prefer to retire while I still have a good track record. And I believe that I have an amazing staff of people that do lovely work to the point where I'm honestly no longer necessary for that. And I'm, and I'm glad and I'm happy for that and I'm proud of them. If you want to see more repair videos, he does post them on his channel. You can also check out channels like uh, Paul Daniels. You can check out um, Tim Herman at TCR Circuit, STS Telecom, uh, Jesse Cruz at VCC Board Repairs, iPad Rehab, Mark Schaefer. There's a ton of channels out there showcasing board repair, and he also is one of them. I did notice in the comment section of that video, there were many people wondering, why is he not doing the board repair videos anymore? And well, there you have it. I do have a lot of time invested in a different project, Repair.Wiki, that also seeks to get people kind of involved in repairs in a different way. Again, I don't think that if I create my 800 first board repair video to complement the 800th one, that that's really going to move the ball forward forward as much anymore, even if I did feel comfortable doing that work. If you take a look at repair.wiki, you will see that, again, whether we're talking about MacBook Airs or iPhone motherboards, what I'm looking to do is create an easily searchable database of common problems along with common fixes for them, as well as general troubleshooting data to help people become better at troubleshooting and also to allow repair shops in general or just end consumers to be able to get a quick idea as to whether or not their problem is a problem that is fixable or whether it is a rabbit hole to help that just needs to go away that is not really an economically viable repair. And we are enlisting the help of people in the repair community that watch this channel. Some of the people are some of the people that I've mentioned that are experts in repair to be able to contribute to this database. And if you are somebody who believes that you have top level knowledge on devices that have very high demand for consumer repair and you wish to contribute to this data, 
database and you would like to be compensated for it, feel free to reach out to lewis at fighttorepair.org and we can work something out. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.